How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and we haven't looked at any sick builds in quite some time. My channel is usually just filled of riced out cars or dumbasses that don't know how to drive. Today we're going to be taking a look at some built cars that are actually for sale. We'll see if they're for a fair price. We'll try to guess our horsepower if the owner doesn't say. We're just going to look at some pretty sick builds. I like this series a lot because it gives me ideas for like future builds or if you guys have these cars and are like oh I want to see what mods I can do to it. Like this is a good way to kind of see what other people are doing and just how crazy they can turn out. If you guys do want to support the channel so I can build some really sick cars, go pick up some Flock Racing merch. I know I keep saying I'm going to have new merch come out very soon, which I am. I literally have the front logos. I just need some back logos to put on because selling one-sided merch just doesn't seem worth it to me. So anyways, we got some Flock Racing merch, 40 rolls, 60 rolls, sweaters, hoodies, stickers, whatever you want. Uh, use discount code RACE. Thank you for the support. Let's dive in. 2013 Subaru BRZ Limited fucking for $40,000. This must be one hell of a BRZ. I mean, Kelly Blue Book is saying that's 20 grand overpriced. So let's see if it's worth it. First photo, I'm seeing some upgraded Willwood brakes. That's usually a good sign. You do need brakes to stop if you aren't up and up the horsepower. The rear end looks extra thick. Looks like he has some sort of wide body on it. Aftermarket taillights as well. The exhaust doesn't look too obnoxious, which I like. I mean, so far, it just looks like a very clean, wide body, you know, stancy car. I wouldn't call it super stancy because he doesn't have crazy camber, but like it's got a, an aggressive stance, in my opinion. But then he pops the hood, and I think he wins, at least in the category of BRZs. For now, I mean, there are some pretty crazy ones out there, but an LS underneath the hood. Like, this is what Subaru and Toyota just should have released it with. Like, people are going to do it anyways. You might as well just cut to the chase and throw an LS in. I mean, why not? Just call it the BRZ um, limited package or something. Or unlimited, because there's unlimited potential with a freaking LS. But yeah, I mean, come on. Like, they, they, you know, you guys really love that flat four, and I get it, but we need some more power. Either toss a turbo or make a six cylinder option. If I saw this at a car meet, I don't think I would expect an LS underneath the hood. I don't, I don't think it just doesn't strike me as an LS equipped car. Like you look at it and you just think cookie cutter BRZ. Now I haven't seen this particular wide body on one yeah, like ever, but it, it looks fairly nice. It's not super cookie cutter. Like the one that everyone else does. He doesn't have a giant wing. So I like that. Like it's like a subtle stance car, but like he did the wide body. Cause I guarantee he needs wider wheels to make this thing hook. So like, it all makes sense. I mean, even looking into the interior, like, like it doesn't raise any red flags that like this thing has had a heart transplant. So everything was done very cleanly. Uh, I wonder if his gauges work. If he got his gauges to work, that's really impressive. But for 40 grand, would you guys pay 40 grand for a BRZ with an LS? I don't think it would cost 40 grand to replicate. Eh, he does have a really clean wide body. I, I was thinking non wide body because, yeah, it definitely wouldn't cost 40 grand to just LS swap one. I think you can pick these up for in the teens, you know, like around 15 grand probably. Uh, so tossing an LS and maybe be another 10. But even then, like that's a that's a lot. That's a, a lot to ask. Let's read his description. It says it makes approximately 430 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. The LS3 was pulled from a low mileage Chevy SS was with approximately 30,000 miles. That's I mean, really good. I mean, LS is last a long ass time anyways, but really nice. It says it functions like it's stock, gas gauge, traction control, all that work supposedly. Wow. 6.2 LS3 with a stage 4 BTR NA cam. Got upgraded valve train, obviously custom engine mounts and shit. He's got a ZR1 twin disc in it, so that's nice. I don't think uh, he'll be slipping his clutch anytime soon. Um, I, I don't see, oh, it's a Tremec uh, TR6060, so really solid drivetrain and engine setup. I think to the right person, it might be worth 40,000, but that does still seem a little high. Let me know down below if you guys have done this. Is this a fair price? I'm really interested. I'm really curious. I don't want to say interested. I would not buy one of these. Eh, maybe I would, but not for that price. Next car, 1986 Toyota Supra. That does not look like a 1986 Toyota Supra. He meant to say 1996 Toyota Supra, but it's fine. And that's one big spooly snail underneath the hood. Let's take a look. He's asking $79,000 for this bad boy. So for double, you can get this. Would you rather have two LS swapped BRZs or a drag Supra? Like fully fledged drag Supra. I mean, you, you don't have parachutes and battery terminals on the rear unless you're serious. Looks like some sort of 15 inch beadlock skinnies up front. Gigantic slick. I want to do this to my Mustang bumper. Um, I think the next photo will show it better. Yeah, I want to. So my Mustang bumper has like little cutouts 
and they don't go anywhere. One of them does have the blinkers. So I want to put like clear Lexan over it and then rivet it in. I feel like that would look so cool and just like also help with just aerodynamics and probably also bumper structural integrity. I don't like the glass headlights. Um, I think those are the ugliest things I've ever seen. You got to get some 98 headlights. That's that's 100 percent needed. It's funny because like builds go one of two ways. Usually like the BRZ was kind of an anomaly where he did like, you know, appearance and, you know, performance. This guy did strictly performance like the, the body looks bone stock besides the inside, obviously. But I mean, like looking at it from the outside, besides the wheels, he didn't touch a damn thing. No hood, no fenders, no doors, no different wing. I mean, he just said we're throwing on these fucking little block off plates and we're calling it a day. The interior's got an aluminum racing seat. Looks like a half cage, maybe a full cage. I mean, his car, that's yeah, a full cage. His car says it makes 870 wheel horsepower. It does 8.97 at 155 miles per hour. That's really fucking fast. Especially for 870 wheel horsepower. That's, that's really fucking fast. I need a fucking screen thing like this. I don't know what I would put there, but I need it. Oh, well, yeah, that's, he's got all this shit right here. Yeah, no, I don't need that. All my shit works normally. God, fucking racing net and everything. He's got a little screen right there showing everything. Gigantic turbo. Um, I wonder if he says how big it is. We'll take a look in a second. It's got to be a built uh, 2JZ. Got to be because I'm at the limit on mine for stock block. I mean, you could definitely do more, but it depends on how hard you drive your car. If you're drag racing your car, obviously you're driving it really hard. Like some people love these dyno queens. They'll do like one dyno pull on their shit and it'll make like 800 wheel, 900 wheel or something. And then they'll just limp it around town. Now, that's not who I am. So I'm I'm not quite that high, but I, I would imagine this is built. I mean, if this isn't built, that's just stupid. No offense. Battery box, fucking full suspension. Went within a solid rear axle. Smart move. I want to do that as well. Very clean car. It's just pure business. He's not here to steal the show, although he definitely would. But he says, uh, the import guys are now offering this, op this absolutely insane Toyota Supra to a new home. 870 wheel horsepower, 8,000 RPM, 31 PSI through a turbo 400 trans running on E85. It's a Borg Warner S476SCE1AR. They didn't really tell me the size. I don't... This, no okay it's got bc 276 cams that is big yeah head studs just like i said springs retainers stock casting cylinder head he doesn't mention at least not that i see built motor but i can't imagine someone would be racing 870 wheel horsepower and not building it like that's just you're just it's just a grenade at that point so he says it pops wheelies which is fucking sick i mean that's fast 8.97 at 155 and a quarter that is that's an eight second car. I mean, that's fast. Pretty much nine seconds, but drag racers love being very specific. So 8.97. Is it worth 80 grand? I, I'd say it probably is. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty fair price. I mean, you could buy a stock one for probably 50 or 60. If you're looking to already just drag race, here you go. Next car, 1984 Chevrolet El Camino. Drew, that's like a grandpa car. That thing looks whack. Look at the interior. It looks like it smells like old man nutsack. Oh my god. Look at the wheels. They're so fucking ugly. Oh my god. Is that an intercooler, Drew? That's kind of interesting. Oh, but the rest of it just looks like shit. I mean, it's an 84. No, but nobody likes those. But oh, he's got some upgraded suspension. But who cares? I mean, it's ugly. It's got some decent looking Corvette brakes on it. But Either way, I mean, it's an El Camino. Who, 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 what, what, what do we got here? What, what do we have here? We have what appears to be a single turbo on an LS. And you guys were being disrespectful. Yeah, my bad. It's an LM7, not an LS7. 5.3, freshly rebuilt, pumping 11 PSI. This little grandpa station wagon that you can take to Home Depot and throw some lumber in the back has a turbo LS. And you guys were being disrespectful to me. It has a trans cooler, an oversized aluminum radiator. It probably runs like dog shit. Uh, probably doesn't run that bad, but it looks fairly good. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I would have like tucked away and routed probably a little bit different. Um, but then again, it's not my car, so I'm not there to, you know, decide where shit goes but like there's just a lot of like it looks like there's a lot of excess line kind of just like jammed in there but 
I mean, you are like doing some sort of weird Frankenstein build, so it's cool. I mean, how much power do you think a rebuilt 5.3 on 11 pounds is making? I mean, it's got to be pretty quick. There's, there's no way this thing is a slouch. I mean, the car looks like it's a tin can, so no way it's a slouch. The exterior, not super crazy about the wheels. I mean, it kind of looks like a little sleeper with like this the stock body and stock paint and everything. The interior looks beat to hell, so uh, he's totally just living it up and rocking the whole undercover you know race car life um the no bumper though i mean i would i mean i don't know what else you could really do but maybe just paint the intercooler black with the piping and it would be so sleek like nobody would see it coming Nineteen thousand for that too i mean if it's like a a backyard build uh, i mean i don't see a filter on that turbo he might have like a mesh screen but that's that's not saving you from sand and shit especially if you're driving on dirt paint is negative five out of ten that's fine you want it to look like a sleeper anyways you're not buying an 84 to turn into a fucking show car. I think it's cool. I think it is fitting for the series, and it is definitely cool. Definitely, like, if, if I was cruising on the highway, I saw old man Jenkins in his fucking 84 El Camino, and I heard, as he's pulling up, oh, old man Jenkins can get some bitches. Eight, uh, 19 grand? Maybe. Next car, 2010, Cadillac CTS V uh, sedan, four door, four, 49,900. 50 grand okay just just round up that that trick ain't you ain't fooling me that's 50 grand he's selling his 2010 with 108,000 miles i see skinnies up front i see a fat slick in the rear so far we're off to a good start i love ctsvs i mean they're they're big and they're heavy but they're they just dance so well they just fucking just fucking go crazy and he left it looking like relatively classy too like some of these guys get their CTSVs and they wrap them like these like ghetto ass colors and shit. Like, no, this one looks this one looks pretty pretty classy. It's just got silver. He's kind of like gave it a little smoked like murdered out look, um, but it's just it's classy, you know. It's once again just like the Supra, all business. He, he's not here to throw a goofy ass wing on that shit. Looks like he's done some sort of head work. He's got suspension too, you know. Even these heavy ass boats need to be able to handle well. I, it looks like he has cutouts. Um, so this thing probably is really fucking loud if he wants it to be. I'm not a huge fan of cutouts because, I don't know, to me it's just like, they, they don't like dump in the right spot usually. Like if it's a factory um, valve that you can open and close, that's different. But like these cutouts, for instance, it's dumping right under your rear end. So it's probably droney as hell. And like, if you are going to shoot flames, you're not even going to see it. So it's like, well, what's really the point, you know, just to be a little louder, like. I would just leave it looking quiet or being quiet. My bad. Looks like it's on some sort of coil over, which is always, you know, handy. Solid mounts. I think that's what he's trying to show here. He's got some solid um, subframe mounts. And it made 824 wheel horsepower and 805 torque. That's a, that, that girl can move. That girl can definitely move. Underneath the hood, the blowers just look so crazy too. They're just fucking giant. And you gotta love that green belt. You gotta love that. Yeah, they got a green belt. That means they don't fuck around. Yeah, that's some heavy duty shit right there. Fuel pressure regulator. Is that under the dash? Am I tripping? Or is it just like, it's an upside down photo. Okay, I thought it was under the dash. And then the interior, just like the old man who bought it off the lot, left it just fucking as is, you know? So it's a built motor, makes 800 and something horsepower. It's got a flex fuel setup. What What isn't there to love about this car? You, you can cross country this car, flex fuel, go anywhere you want. And he's only asking 50 grand, which honestly doesn't seem half bad for what it is. Like these cars normally fetch around that anyways. Like if I just type in, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna just type in CT SV. Here's a 2013 for 50 grand. Here's a 2010 for 40 grand. Here's a 2012 for 33 grand. Here's a 2015. Okay, so this is a little on the higher end, but it's a built motor making 800 something plus horsepower. I don't know if he'll see the 50 grand, but 40 to 45 seems relatively fair so cool overall i think we saw some really cool cars this episode i think um if i had to choose out of those since i already have the supra i don't think i would choose the supra even though it probably is the fastest car there i'd probably weirdly go with the ls swap the brz let me know what you guys would choose down in the comments down below i'm really interested to see which one of those builds really uh you know tickled your pickle if you guys do want to see more videos like this one let me know down below send me more craigslist tuner posts to my gmail drew at gmail.com pick up some merch support the channel use discount code race until next video peace